At the Flipside Art Studio near 5th and Liberty in Ann Arbor, owner Mary Kay Stevanis is used to seeing tables filled with kids doing art projects at birthday parties and camps. But the once bustling business is now empty because of the COVID-19 pandemic. It's going to affect the entire art community negatively. I miss the I miss the kids. I worry about them not having this social and art outlet. Stevanis is like so many small business owners struggling to keep their doors open. She's now doing virtual art classes for some schools in the Ann Arbor area. Stevanis is also getting creative in a new way by making art kits from drawing to painting. Each kit comes with professional materials for a different lesson and a link to an online instruction video. Sometimes they want the parents want us to concentrate on one artist and then create something around that like Van Gogh sunflower painting and that's all instructional. So it's changes. I mean, I have thousands of lessons so far. Stevanis has sold 300 kits online while she hopes the idea continues to take off. It's not enough to keep the lights on. So she started this GoFundMe. I, I mean, honestly, over the last few weeks, in order to try to keep the doors open, I'm applying for jobs, full time employment. I don't want to close. And if that means I have to work full time and then work flip side when I get home from work, I will. Now, as Stevanis struggles with the uncertainty of the pandemic, she is certain of one thing. She'll do whatever she can to keep flip side open with the goal to see these tables and chairs filled with kids eagerly drawing and painting once again. I want uh, them to be back here and running in and taking their shoes off and bouncing up on the table and and uh, asking what are we going to do? What are we going to do here at Flipside? She also gives back to the community for every 10 art kits sold. She also gives one to a child in need. And then for every 10 online classes you buy, she also gives one back. If you want more information on her art kits or if you want to see that GoFundMe, head on over to Fox2Detroit.com. We're in Ann Arbor, Veronica Meadows, Fox 2 News. Wherever I go, people say, Mayor, this situation needs to be solved. A major overhaul construction project that began in June on 696 between 94 and 75 has come to a screeching halt after a construction lockout by contractors and union workers. Warren is ground zero for this construction mess. Warren Mayor Jim Fouts says it goes beyond the usual rush hour frustration in his city. He claims the slowdowns affect emergency response times and lives are being put at risk. Our EMS, our police and fire are compromised because we can no longer get from point A to B because of the traffic situation. The mayor says accidents in Warren over the past four months are up 27 percent compared to last year, a fact he included in a letter to Governor Rick Snyder asking for a state of emergency for the city of Warren. I think this could be his shining moment. He's a uh, He's, uh, I think, a bipartisan person, and I'm asking him as a bipartisan leader. He's not asking for money, rather intervention, asking the governor to mediate between the union and contractors to get them back to work before any further delays. The governor's office says it hasn't received the letter just yet, but states they're already trying to facilitate an end to this lockout. They go on to say an emergency request from the mayor may be a little premature. The 696 project isn't slated for completion until November. The mayor says, given Michigan's unpredictable weather, this request couldn't wait. We just have a ticking time bomb because if this isn't solved soon, once we get to mid-November, then it may be too late. It's so exciting. Shoe lovers in East Point lined up to check out a new way to shop. With COVID-19 forcing businesses to change up their routines, the Foot Locker on 8 Mile and Kelly got creative by setting up their own version of a drive through It's called the Sneak Through. It was dope. Um, well, you know, it's a different experience here in Detroit. You know what I'm saying? I, li I like the experience. It's clean. It's you know, it's Corona free. The sneak through works like any other drive through you've been to. You drive on up and check out their menu. This one features some of their most popular items. Then you go to the speaker, tell the workers what you would like to buy. And then after you place your order, you drive on up. And by the time you get to their window, everything you ordered will be ready to go. I think it's beautiful. You know, I'm coming here. I don't have to stand in line. I don't have to get in contact with people. 
I'm distant from everybody, and so it's a good thing that they done came up with. And Footlogger's Donald Dudley says this is another way customers can buy their favorites without setting foot in the store. In addition to ordering off the menu, you can also pick up online orders. Well, basically, we already have a buy online pickup in store option. So if you do that through our website or through our app, you can also pick that up through our sneak through window. This is the first sneak through in Michigan. Dudley says they plan to expand to other states. Myself and the team here are really excited about it and we just want to make sure that people like are having a convenient experience and having fun while they're shopping. So while the era of COVID-19 has forced businesses to change how they do things, this is one change leaving customers with all smiles. It's exciting and I love it and I, I pray that they keep up the good work. Right now, this is the only Foot Locker in Metro Detroit with the sneak through. You can still go into the store to shop in person. In East Point, Veronica Meadows, Fox 2 News. The outskirts of the Michigan State University campus provided ample room for a collision course. I think all of us are a little afraid, but everybody here felt uh, compelled to be here because this is wrong. This kind of ideology is not welcome here and that we are a diverse area and that we will push back. Supporters of an alt-right leader march in formation through the heart of those protesting against their very presence here. Their path was not the one of least resistance. They gave him a platform, uh, the organizers and, and everybody's out here just to, to resist against that. Punches led to scrums, which in turn led to arrests. One by one, demonstrators from both sides led away in cuffs, including Greg Conti, a Richard Spencer supporter and the director of operations for the National Policy Institute. Police say 24 of the 500 people here taken into custody for one reason or another. Of those charges, uh, some are uh, weapons offenses as well as hindering obstructing as well as someone throwing uh, something some type of chemical at the crowd. The demonstrators aiming their protests at multiple perceived enemies. Spencer is here because the MSU administration allows him to be here. Yeah. 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 Spencer is here because the state of Michigan pays all these cops to come out and protect the fascists. Police were seen escorting some white nationalists to the venue. In other places, we watched as protesters laid behind SWAT vehicles and had to be forcefully removed. As for Richard Spencer, the speech itself was held inside the horse pavilion here on campus. Now, most of the members of the media were denied access inside. However, the speech was streamed live on the website altright.com. Here is what the live stream looked like as Spencer spoke to roughly two dozen supporters about taking alt-right from a movement to something that are, in his words, real. As for the melee that was happening outside during his speech, he called the anti-fascists sick freaks. We are overwhelmingly against racism. We are not teaching that in our schools. And says if they tried to prevent this event, they failed. According to police sources, a few officers here received minor injuries. No word on how many of the 500 were hurt, however. Right around 6 p.m., the crowd dispersed and things were once again quiet here on campus. In East Lansing, Dave Spencer, no relation to Richard Spencer, Fox 2 News.